Hi, this is Brian Klug with Anontech, and what we're going to do right now is just give a quick performance comparison between the Motorola Droid 3, which is of course the phone on the left, and the uh, Motorola Droid X, which is of course the phone on the right. So you might be wondering why I'm showing off the uh, Motorola Droid X versus the Droid 3 instead of the Droid 2. Um, so the first, the first reason is that I don't have a Motorola Droid 2 on hand, but the other reason is that uh, the Droid X is a reasonably good facsimile for a Droid 2 performance, and uh, moreover, it's more, more of a, a better comparison because both of these are running Android 2.3. So, of course, the Droid 3 comes uh, running Android 2.3.4. The uh, Motorola Droid X comes running 2.3.3 with this latest update. Uh, and, of course, the Motorola Droid 2 is still running 2.2 if you're on stock. And, that, and the, the, the Motorola Droid X has a similar SoC to the, uh, the Motorola Droid 2. Of course, the Droid X has a uh, 1 GHz OMAP 3630. The uh, Motorola Droid 2 has an OMAP 3620 at 1 GHz. Um, and, and, of course, the Motorola Droid uh, 3 has an OMAP uh, 4430 at 1 GHz. So, of course, this is a dual-core phone. So before we show anything else, I think that's kind of interesting to look at. If you go into System Panel, which I'm a big fan of, um, they recently added support for showing the second core. So you can see here uh, at the top we have CPU activity on the first core and the second core. So of course the second core is actually off. There's um, one frequency plane between the two, but of course on OMAP4 you can turn the second core off uh, in circumstances where there isn't a lot of load. So I mean if we generate lots of load just by scrolling up and down, you can see obviously yeah, we, we just turned the second one on and we pegged it. So of course the UI is still you know very CPU bound task. Um, even in Android 2.3, even though there's lots of GPU acceleration now. So obviously the, uh, the render thread is on that second core. You can also see it dynamically clock up to 1 gigahertz. Um, and again, I think it's, it's a reasonable comparison you know, to compare the Droid 3 to the X because both the X, the Droid 2, the Droid 3, and the X2 are all running with 512 megabytes of LPDDR2. Uh, so this is pretty fair in my estimation. So let's go fire up the browser and then just go to the Anontech page. Okay, so I've got the, uh, the URL for the Anontech homepage punched in and um, of course we're connected to the same 802.11n access point. So both of these only have 2.4 gigahertz single, space, single spatial stream uh, WLAN support. And we've cleared the cache of course on both of these. So this is going to be a totally fair comparison. I don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully the dual core helps things. So we're going to load them up. We're loading right over the web right now, so we'll see what happens. Hmm, so the X actually is going pretty fast there. I think it's actually going to be pretty close, and of course we have flash on both of these as well. So it looks like the Droid X is pulling down some flash banners. It looks like the X, uh, the Droid 3 finished first and then the X finish next. So let's try loading the uh, Alienware M11X story. See how this goes. It's pretty close there. Still loading things. Droid 3 finishes first. X is still loading. There it's finished. So, I mean, obviously the Droid 3 is faster. I mean, obviously having a second uh, core helps. Of course, this is a dual core Cortex A9, single core Cortex A8. Um, same amount of RAM again. Let's try loading the print, print page view. So you can look at scrolling here. It's still a little bit choppy. You know, it's still not as smooth as it could be. I'd say it's pretty, pretty equal between them. Uh, you do have to keep in mind, of course, that the uh, Droid, where the comparison falls apart is that the Droid X and of course the Droid 2 are um, FWVGA de devices, um, whereas the, uh, the Motorola Droid 3 is QHD. So you do have a, a difference in like 1.3 times as many pixels that need to be drawn. And for that reason, it's not totally a vanilla comparison. But I mean, even then, if you look at just scrolling here, it's still pretty choppy. And that's one of the things that will definitely be changed in uh, Ice Cream Sandwich is that they'll bring the, uh, the backing store from Honeycomb sort of into Android mainline and then of course it'll be, it'll be much smoother since it'll be rendered into that backing store. Let's try it. I didn't get to tap on those at the same time but I want to see just for fun how how much of a difference it is when we have a full page. So of course you can see Flash kind of glitching out there where we're, 
we're composing the page and of course flash is sort of overlaid so when you have a window like this the flash still persists let's try another another test let's go back to the home page so even even there it looked like the droid x had a lead but the uh, droid 3 finished first let's try loading the uh, power supply story So wow, that was um, unexpected. That was pretty fast. Pretty dramatic difference there. And the X is still loading. No, it's done. Let's try just one more thing. What's a good... X is still loading. I'll come down and look at the Lucid. One, two, three. Yeah, so even there, the uh, Droid 3 finishes first. And again, these are both running Android 2.3. Of course, 2.3.4 on the Droid 3, 2.3.3 on the Droid X. So I think that's a pretty good look at how things compare. If we look at the Android UI as a whole, it's a little bit more challenging to compare because the uh, the Droid X doesn't have the new Moto Blur or the Moto Blur that really isn't Moto Blur, but it still is Moto Blur. I mean, you, and you can see if we go and just scroll back and forth, it's not cooperating with me. Come on. Yeah, obviously the Droid 3 has that like 3D layer on top of things. But honestly, the UI on the Droid X, I mean, if that that was my advice that I had in my pocket, I wouldn't be really concerned a lot with with how fast it is at that point. It seems pretty smooth. If you look at scrolling here, this is where again, we can't really make a comparison because it goes this way now. But I guess you can sort of see I don't know, honestly, it's pretty smooth on both of them. So this main Android UI, I guess, isn't really the concern. It's more, you know, both browser performance and then battery life and how things are going to work, you know, in other applications that you use. So I wanted to, to run one last test here where we open up the, uh, the gigantic uh, OS X Lion review in the print mode. So let's go and do that. Let's see if I can tap on print this article at the same time. So I mean, you can see right there that the Droid 3 definitely loaded that initial render faster. Now it's pretty neck and neck. The Droid 3 is definitely loading more though, and it's done. And here comes the X. Hopefully, still going there, it's done. So I, th I think that's a pretty good look at just general overview of performance, especially in the browser, which is what I... I am generally concerned with, you know, first and foremost, and of course scrolling still isn't very different, but you still have to keep in, in mind the fact that we have a larger resolution, so obviously there is a, you know, it's not an apple, apples to apples comparison in that regard. So thanks again, and definitely read the full review.